Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 66 Blue Health Virtual Seminar. Blue Health Virtual Seminar is a platform that allows healthcare professionals to discuss current management updates of different health-related topics for better patient care. Today's session is brought to you by Blue Health Ethiopia in collaboration with HPG Medical Assistance and Health Science Care. Blue Health Ethiopia is a medical consultancy company founded by medical doctors and a computer engineer and we aim to be an influential healthcare leader in creating a skilled community through easily accessible knowledge and preventive medicine and i'm your host dr Yano Tadella, a general physician and first aid trainer from blue health ethiopia today it's a pleasure having dr hamza sheikh here with us to present on the osteoporotic spine and spine fracture management Dr. Hamza Sheikh is a consultant spine surgeon in Manipal Hospital and has a various expertise over the field and multiple publications on this specific field. So I would like to give the stage to Dr. Kritika to give a brief overview for, of HPG Medical Assistance and Dr. Hamza Sheikh's experience. Dr. Kritika, if you please. Sure. Thank you, Adam. Hi, guys. I'm uh, Dr. Kritika. Thank you for participating. A special thanks to Manipal Hospital and Dr. Hamza. I am representing HPG Medical Assistance, which is, which is a medical travel company and a brand which is owned by Healthians, India's largest diagnostic center. So if I talk about Dr. Hamza, I think so. I'll probably take 30 minutes. So I'll just end it up within uh, 30 seconds. He is uh, like his field of expertise is in surgical and non-surgical treatment of spinal disorders, including disc surgery and spinal fusions at all levels of the spine from the neck to the lower back. By the time he comes back, let me introduce you uh, to HPG Medical Assistant. So uh, we assist international patients and over the period of 11 years, we have assisted more than 10,000 patients. And even if the patients, uh, like if the surgery, if the treatment they require is already present in the local areas, we also provide provide free medical opinion and that's what we do if uh, after this seminar if anyone uh, comes with any query you can contact to uh, blue health and thank you blue health for the seminar uh, thank you dr kritika so good evening everyone uh, greetings from india on behalf of medical hospital new delhi i welcome you all for this presentation before starting my presentation, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Hamza Sheikh and I am a spine and scoliosis surgeon. After completing MBBS, I did my specialization in orthopedics and as an orthopedic, uh, uh, orthopedic surgeon, I further decided to pursue and refine my skills in uh, spine surgery. And then further, I did my specialization in the spine surgery and for last 10 years, I am practicing as a spine surgeon. And for last seven years, I have been associated with this Manipal group. And uh, and then presently, I am working in the Delhi branch, Manipal Hospital, Dwarka. And I am here working as an independent consultant and spine surgeon. So today, the topic is very important issue. That is osteoporosis or osteoporotic spine fracture. This is basically often ignored or most of the time uh, missed because very less people have the direct symptoms about the osteoporosis. My presentation will be in two parts. First, we'll be discussing about the osteoporosis and its medical management. And part B will be about the management of osteoporotic spine fractures. So first, what is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is basically a skeletal disorder in which bone become weak and brittle, predisposing a person to increase risk of fracture. So basically, can everybody able to see the difference between a normal bone and bone with a mild osteoporosis and third, uh, third photo with bone with severe osteoporosis. You can very well differentiate how is the density is differs between the normal bone and the osteoporosis. So basically what happens in this osteoporosis, uh, I have been told that my audience will be doctors and some non-doctors also. So I have kept my presentation in a very basic form so that everybody should learn something from this presentation. Uh, the detailed uh, pathophysiology of osteoporosis is very 
complex and very detailed but i uh, summarize in a very small thing is like every bone uh, every living tissue bone is also a living tissue and it is constantly being broken down and replaced with the newly formed bones so what happens in normal bone metabolism basically simultaneously bones also form and bone resorbs also means broken down so bone formation is by the osteoblasts and bone resorption is by the osteoblast there is always a uh, equal balance is there to maintain the uh, density of the bone but what happens in the osteoporosis is that the, um, uh, the capability of osteoblast to form a new bone reduces over the time and the osteoclastic activity or bone resorption is increased so the overall what happens osteoporosis occurs when new bone formation doesn't keep up with the loss of old bones so this is the in summary what happens in the osteoporosis so basically osteoporosis is not just the low calcium in the bone all maybe the calcium levels are normal but what happens the whole bone mass is becoming reduced with the age especially in women after the menopause so basically what is the burden of this disease so i am mean first telling about the in indian scenario according to who figures one out of eight indian males suffer from osteoporosis and one out of three indian females suffer from osteoporosis india is becoming one of the largest affected countries in the world thanks to the uh, amount of largest population we have but what about the osteoporosis in africa where are we now there are very limited studies on osteoporosis from african nations it remains a neglected disease and there are no age standardized reference data available to accurately screen and diagnose individual with osteoporosis so definitely one thing is there the disease is on rise because survivability of the people is increasing with the advancement in the medicine and uh, more increasing the hygiene of the patient, uh, of the people a another study i am quoting is from zambia itself and according to this study 32.9% of the patient had osteoporosis and 43.4 had osteopenia and study also showed both men and women have an equal chance of acquiring the osteoporosis there is one more global studies uh, which uh, it is a epidemi epidemiological studies uh, which uh, to find out uh, how is the prevalence of the osteoporosis throughout the world and according to this study uh, countries have uh, different variation is there like netherland has only 4.1% of the population having osteoporosis while turkey has the uh, 52% and in the continent wise 8% in the oceana and compared to africa to africa has a 26.9% of osteoporosis prevalence so how this osteoporosis present to the a clinician basically osteoporosis is a silent disease why it is silent because it typically don't have any symptoms until a bone is broken our patient will presents with generalized symptoms like low back pain neck pain loss of height over the time a stoop bent posture of or sometimes when ultimately when fracture happens the patient presented with a severe pain fracture of spine hip or wrist bone the common osteoporotic fracture sites are three first spine is the most common second hip third is the wrist so this osteoporotic is also known as fragility factors why because the bones are these becomes fragile that's why it is also known as fragility factors or senile fractures senile means it mostly occur in the old age group when osteoporosis is prevalent it is called senile fractures also these are the main morbidity of the osteoporosis and often leads to a reduced quality of life the lifetime risk after age of 50 years one in two for women and one in 
fight for them. Previous fragility factors are the strong predictors of future fractures. Overall, 46 vertebral, 16% of hip and 16% of wrist fractures risk is there. So what are the types of osteoporosis? So primary and secondary. In primary, it is a postmenopausal or age associated because senile and after certain age, mostly after 60 years of age. And third is the idiopathic when we don't know the exact cause, underlying cause of osteoporosis. Secondary osteoporosis is when there is an identifiable agent or disease is there to result in a bone weakness or osteoporosis. So here is a graph which shows about the bone mass. So most of the bone mass which develop in a uh, body either in uh, male or female is mostly around 25 years of age. After that there is always decrease in the uh, bone formation. And in women, especially after menopause, bone resorption is accelerated because there is sudden drop in the estrogen level. So what are the risk factors for the osteoporosis? In young patients, it is low calcium intake, low body weight, limited exercise. Limited exercise is very important, is becoming more of a concern, especially in today's world when there is more uh, children are exposed to uh, mobile phones or tablets and not going outside for proper physical games. They are more becoming introverts. So because of limited exercise, like I told, most of the bone mass formation occurs within the second to third period of life. When they don't uh, go for physical activity, the chances of becoming uh, in later life of becoming osteoporosis becoming very high. In other patients, like I told earlier, menopausal, cigarette smoking, low trauma fractures, in certain uh, endocrinological tumors or uh, endocrinological disease like hyperparathyroidism or chronic steroid use. These are the risk factors for developing osteoporosis. So, once we are uh, making a clinical diagnosis that it is an osteoporosis. How do we work up for that? So for doing a workup, our aim is first to establish the diagnosis, second to look for the secondary cause of the osteoporosis and third is to determine the safe pharmacological therapies if needed. So what we do first to establish diagnosis of the osteoporosis. So basically, we divide the investigation in three parts. First is the foremost and most important is the DEXA scan. Second is blood investigation. Third is X-ray and MRI. So what is DEXA scan? The DEXA scan is basically a, a numbering or spring system uh, which we compare from a healthy individuals. So basically it is used for measuring the bone mass and to establish the diagnosis of the osteoporosis because all the classification of the osteoporosis as per the WHO guidelines also is based on the DEXA scan report. So from where we all can measure the DEXA scan or bone mass? It is from hip, lumbar spine, third is the distal forearm. But for diagnosis and treatment management purpose, only hip and lumbar spine score is used. Distal forearm is not used in either diagnosis or treatment purposes also. I will later clarify in later on. So what is DEXA scan? Basically it is a standard test for uh, bone mass uh, density evaluation. It is reported as a T-score and a Z-score. So basically T-score is the number of standard deviation from a normal young adult mean values and the Z score is number of standard deviation from the normal mean value for age, race or ethnicity and sex matched control subjects. Usually it is used in case of severe osteoporosis or osteoporosis in younger patient or in children. 
So interpretation of the DEXA scan is as T score and Z score. So WHO basically uses a T score. So according to that, if it is a score is less than minus one and between and upper than the minus two point five, it is called osteopenia. It is called osteopenia. When the score is less than two point five, it is called osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. So basically, T score of less than two point five standard deviation with fragility factors. He normally clinically indicates as a patient having severe osteoporosis. So let me tell you one thing again. T score is not applicable when patient is premenopausal or men younger than fifty years and children. In that we use Z score. Okay. So lab investigation. What for lab investigation we usually order? Uh, to uh, investigate the underlying causes of the osteoporosis. First, to diagnose the disorder in osteoporosis, like CBC, LFT, KFD, serum chemistry, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, vitamin D3, and alkaline phosphatase. And to exclude the secondary causes, 24-hour urine calcium level, parathyroid level, urinary free cortisol level, testosterone, and gonadotropins levels in younger men. Sometimes we need to do uh, bone marrow biopsy also and serum protein electrophoresis to pull out the multiple myeloma. Sometimes it is mimics like osteoporosis or osteoporosis mimics like the multiple myeloma. So what is the diagnostic criteria to label a person having a osteoporosis? So this is the ACE guidelines uh, of the diagnosis of osteoporosis. It, show, it says that a T score of less than 2.5 or below in lumbar spine, femoral leg, neck, total proximal, or one third of radius. No trauma, spine or hip fracture. No trauma. Regardless, if patient has a low trauma, means without any uh, road traffic accident or fall from a significant height, it will term as a osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. Regardless, sometimes BMD shows uh, uh, scoring more than uh, minus 2.5. Still, it will be labeled as a osteoporosis. Other is when T score is between the osteopenia and osteoporosis level, but fragility fracture of proximal humerus, pelvis, or distal forearm is there, then it is also labeled as a osteoporosis. Other is the T score is between the minus 1.0 and minus 2.5, but high flex index is there. Flex index is a fracture probability scoring system which is mostly used in the western uh, countries. Uh, we India also don't have a uh, directly for our population of flex, but most of the guidelines uses now flex index also. So how do we manage the osteoporosis? First, essentially, it is a medical and medicine treatment is required until you broke up bone. So what are the anti-osteoporosis medicines? There are multiple, uh, basically, there are two class of the medicines for the management of the osteoporosis. Like I told earlier, there are two, basically, uh, cells are there. One is involvement in the bone formation that is called osteoblast, and other is the osteoclast, which is involved in the bone resorption. So, one class of medicine is called anabolic, or stimulators of the bone formation. This stimulates the osteoclast to form new bone. And other class is the osteoclast. This is called anti resorptive, uh, anti resorptive, or inhibitors of the bone resorption. Basically, this will increase the bone formation and this decreases the bone resorption. So, uh, class, there are a number of medicines are there. Traditionally, there is a inhibitor of bone resorption as the bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates today also is widely used for managing the osteoporosis. Other is the calcitonin hormone. Other is the estrogen and progesterone, especially in the postmenopausal women, and other is the selective estrogen receptor modulator. And other is the latest one, which normally are 
used is the Rankle inhibitor or Tenusumab. The other class is the which stimulates the bone formation is the parathyroid hormone. This is becoming the first line of treatment for the osteoporosis. And the newer emerging therapies are use of uh, monoclonal antibodies, Romosuzab. And obviously, whenever you have to start this medicine, calcium and vitamin D supplement should be supplemented adequately. So, how do we decide which medicines to be started? So, first we have to stratify patient by the level of fracture risk in the next decade or within 5 years. So, it is divided into two parts. Fracture risk is high and fracture risk is very high. So, when fracture risk is high, when the T-score is minus 1.0 to minus 2.5, and there is a history of spine or hip fragility fracture. The fracture is high. When the T score is minus 1.0 to minus 2.5, and frax, uh, fracture probability is more than 20%, that is also labeled as a high risk patient for osteoporotic fractures. And other is the very high. What is very high? When there is a recently fragile, uh, fragility fracture is there. A fracture happened to a person who was already on the osteoporotic therapy or multiple fractures are there. A patient is on long-term glucocorticoid or steroid therapy or when patient has a very low T score minus 3.0 and fra uh, FRAX index which shows the major fracture risk is more than 30% for hip fracture more than 4.5%. We stratify this patient into two high and very high. So, other is the low risk when there is a T score is also uh, above the minus 2.5 and patient uh, stability is also there. Then, in that case, we just give calcium and vitamin D and ask them to be more active, do more exercise. In high risk, we have to give, like I said, every patient has to give calcium and vitamin D supplements. And if there any risk or is there of uh, falling, so we have to counsel them that uh, patient has to uh, stop using any uh, walking aid assistance to prevent the fall. And we can consider either traditional bisphosphonates or newer medicines like denosumab or uh, parathyroid hormone supplements. Mm -hmm. But definitely in a very high risk fracture probability, we have to consider anabolic as well as denosumab. So now the first line of therapy is becoming more and more towards the combined therapy, like giving parathyroid hormone supplements and denosumab. Both has an additive effect and the chances of increasing the uh, bone density is or when compared to individual. So how do we prevent the future osteoporotic fractures? So like I told, patient has to undergo using the pharmacological management, which aim is to increase the BMD. BMD is bone mass density. And non-pharmacological management is also very important. One has to undergo uh, sun exposure, fights, Smoking or stop smoking, I will say, uh, responsible drinking, regular exercise is very important and daily intake of the calcium and in fact the good diet, protein, high protein diet is also needed. So like I told, vitamin D and calcium supplement should be there daily, uh, 5000 international unit or for 8 to 12 weeks or 60,000 international units once a week for the next 8 to 12 weeks. And one has to take 1 gram or 1000 milligram of uh, calcium daily. So fact factors which increases the risk of osteoporotic fractures like uh, white drinking alcohol or excessive alcohol or stop smoking. So this is the in general block plus yoga much but I normally tell my patient after adding the pharmacological treatment, one should go for walk for at least 40 minutes. Risk walking is much better and do some yoga exercise. 
So that will up till here it is the part of osteoporosis, health osteoporosis, medical management. Now comes to the my specific part of a spine surgeon as a how to manage a patient who comes with the osteoporotic spine fracture. So traditionally osteoporotic spine fracture now also if it is uh, can be treated with non-surgical technique also, methods also. It is also very well acceptable and good results are there. But sometimes patients who are uh, more than 70 uh, years of age or 80 years of age and they become bedridden because of pain. In that patient, I normally don't advise uh, conservative management because it will lead them to remain on that for a longer time, which is very detrimental for the overall health. So, in these patients, newer techniques, newer surgical methods have been introduced for a long time, more than 10 15 years is there, and we are regularly doing. So. I will be discussing now the management of osteoporotic spine fractures. So, like I told, non surgical options are also there restricted bed rest, pain medicine. Brace and anti osteoporotic medication will be continued whether you prefer surgical or surgical techniques. Other options are it is a minimally invasive. In this, we don't need to open the patient's wound. We just have to put the needle. We just put the needle under the CM or X ray machine guided. We just put the cement and the fracture, fracture pain get resolved immediately. Other is the next counter, uh, step is we introduce through that needle uh, balloon to jack up the fractured part and after that we remove the balloon, we put the needle inside the fracture vertebra, we inflate the balloon to jack up the lost height with uh, to jack up the lost height and then we fill that point with the cement. This is called kyphoplasty. So sometimes we have to open that fracture with a minimally invasive way of putting the pedicle screw fixation also we need it. And very rarely sometimes in such situation when spinal cord is also damaged by multiple uh, fractures we have to do the open surgery but mostly the uh, in this age group patients are having multiple comorbidities and uh, all the bones are also weak so putting the screws is also very difficult in such cases we normally avoid do any open surgeries or this pedicle screw fixation it is only a very rare occasion when patient has associated Spinal cord compression is also there, which leads to weakness in the legs. In such cases, we have to do something to manage this. So, now the next part is, I will be uh, showing my, some of the cases, uh, how I manage the patient with the osteoporotic fractures. So, this is 65-year-old gentleman, sustained injury by slip and fall at home. He presented with, to me with a severe low back pain and he was not even able to sit or stand and he was confined to bed for last five days. So after the MRI which showed this fracture, shown, so what I did, I did percutaneously without putting the patient, I just put a needle and through that needle I put the cement inside. So immediately putting the cement, the fracture will not it will not cause pain and patient become pain free immediately after the surgery within 4 hours I normally make the patient walk also and they can very well go back home on the same day. So my next case is the 82 year old lady. She also sustained injury by a sudden jerk while getting up from the chair at home. Sometimes it this uh, 82 years of age or 90 years of age, sometimes bones are so weak that you don't need to fall to get it broken. You just get it up from sudden jerk also, that you can, uh, patient can put the bone also. So she also came with severe pain. So she, at the age of 82, she also had multiple comorbidities like 
full package was there diabetes hypertension underwent stenting also for heart cld was also the cld liver disease was there and she was obese so to leave such a patient on a bed to get it better on its own to it is very very risky for the patient it will be detrimental for the overall health so but i did some for her in this case uh, this fracture was there and the giving the anesthesia was also very challenging so i did this surgery under the local anesthesia even no general anesthesia is required only sedation or sometimes only local anesthesia is suffice to do the this procedure so third case is 65 year gentleman he is he is from sudan he came to me uh, basically he came to india for the his diabetic treatment but unfortunately he slipped and fell in the bathroom and uh, he presented to me in the hospital with severe ankle low back pain and he is becoming bedridden due to pain and he also had multiple comorbidities diabetes obese so i offered him this procedure because he was healthy and so i decided to augment the kyphoplasty with pedicle scope also this whole surgery this whole surgery i did uh percutaneously by putting a small small holes i did the surgery i didn't open it it's all under the uh, fluoroscopic guidance uh, it's a percutaneous surgery and after the surgery patient was able to go my fourth case is 72 year gentleman from is he is was a retired is officer he also presented to me with a uh, slip and fall in bathroom and uh, he also had multiple comorbidities like diabetes coronary artery disease and neurological weakness sometimes like i told uh, after fracture patient also develops weakness in the legs for that i did this thing so i uh, augment the fractured vertebra with the cement and put the percutaneous cemented percutaneous screw and did a laminectomy to decompress the spinal cord so laminectomy was done to decompress the spinal cord dura so this is very interesting case he is a 84 year uh, old gentleman uh, you can see this uh, uh, fracture is there in l3 and this line this is white line cavity is also known as fracture of kamel's lesion basically is a osteonecrosis of the bone so this is a sure shot sign that this type of fracture will not heal on its own it has to be supplemented by some uh, surgical techniques to pack up this fracture because there is a cavity inside it will keep on moving like a sponge and keep on causing pain to the patient so what i did the same thing percutaneously i put the cement inside and you can clearly see there was a cavity inside which is slowly getting filled with this cement and after the procedure two weeks after the surgery this gentleman uh, son sent me the video that he is enjoying his uh, uh, sunday saturday morning as he was able to walk independently this guy is 84 year old gentleman so this process this type of procedure is very rewarding and will improve the quality of life of patient so my last uh, case is 76 year old gentleman from kongu i recently operated him so he presented with me a lumbar spinal deformity and the etiology was mixed of degenerative spine disease and osteoporosis he presented to me with axial low back pain and he was not able to stand or walk erect so this was the mri and this is the x ray how he was standing so i did this type of surgery to make him straight and uh, as his bone was also weak so the upper screws i put with the cement augmented screws so before surgery he was like this and immediately after surgery he is happy 
and he is able to walk immediately. This is the video of next day of the surgery. He is able to walk straight, almost pain free. So now my take home messages are healthy lifestyle and healthy diet can prevent the risk of osteoporosis. Like I will repeat again, the most of the bone mass happens till the age of 25 to 30 years of age. So we have to encourage our children to go out in sun and play and play and play and do some physical activities so that their bone mass should be good enough to tackle or prevent the osteoporosis later in life. So newer anti-osteoporotic agents like injection teriparatide and injection penosumab are quite effective anti-osteoporotic drugs and they have become a uh, first line of therapy, combined therapy in case of severe osteoporosis. And the newer minimally invasive techniques like balloon kyphoplasty or plasty has become a standard of care of treatment in managing the osteoporotic spine fractures. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hamza. Yes, this was a very nice presentation. So now, if there are any participants who have any questions regarding the topic, I would invite you to write questions in the chat box. One second. I should have stopped sharing now. Stop. Um, yes. yes. Yes, sir. So anyone from the participants can ask any questions that you would like regarding this topic. So Dr. Hamza can address them. I think I've been able to uh, make some uh, impression mm -hmm. that what is osteoporosis and why it is important and why it is uh, the latest techniques are available or latest treatment are available. I hope uh, somebody will follow this thing. So, Asafa Sunta asked, are yes. any drugs uh, that cause osteoporosis? Patient who is on uh, uh, steroid therapy for any any other underlying problem like uh, asthma or uh, uh, you can say arthritis normally we have to give steroids therapy so steroid therapy is a known drug which can lead to osteoporosis and other medicines are also some uh, anti epileptic drugs are also there which leads to osteoporosis osteoporosis uh, is common in female only, mostly. The reason being, after menopause, the important hormone, estrogen, decreases in the body very quickly and uh, patient, females develop osteoporosis. That, that's why in normally what we tell the patient uh, after the menopause, after the five years of the menopause, they should get the DEXA scan done. Baseline DEXA scan should be done. It should be the routine thing. Because to detect osteoporosis earlier, we can manage better. Now the next question by Ali Usman. Is kyphosis in old lady can be treated medically with bisphosphonates and calcium alone? See, uh, if nothing is available then bisphosphonate definitely it has been the uh, medicines which we used to give for a long time and definitely calcium should be supplemented daily that is no doubt about it but that the question is in is kyphosis in old lady so the what is the reason of kyphosis we should be knowing if i if we are considering it to be due to multiple osteoporotic fracture uh, then it's becoming uh, uh, itself it tells us that lady is having severe osteoporosis so in case of severe osteoporosis according to the treatment guideline bisphosphonate actually has no role but we have to look upon the uh, what is the um, 
you can say financial of the patient also how it affordability is there or not if patient is affordable definitely we have to and uh, it is resources is available then definitely we have to advise them either uh, parathyroid hormone or at least um, this denosumab uh, one important thing which i like to tell you parathyroid hormone therapy basically it is a hormone therapy and it has to be uh, given daily in an injection form daily like an insulin injection it comes in an injection injection form and patient has to take himself it is like a pen only and uh, they take in the tummy daily and other is the denosumab it is to be taken once in a six months for at least three years so that is the uh, difference between them but in severe osteoporosis bisphosphonate has very limited role uh, only in case when affordability is an issue or resources are not available then only bisphosphonates otherwise like the newer injections which i have told that should be the treatment of choice so how do we prevent steroid induced osteoporosis <laughs> it is a very challenging thing because if steroid is there for a certain medical condition which should not be avoided so it is very difficult to treat in such cases patient has to uh, take good diet good vitamin d and calcium supplements and if dexa scan is becoming towards the osteoporosis one should start before before getting any fracture start this hormonal therapy parathyroid hormone and denosumab thank uh, other question by avi jabisa thank you doctor can osteoporosis get back after it is treated other ways see we can manage the osteoporosis so it is very difficult uh, unless and until it is a drug induced like steroid induced uh, osteoporosis there after withdrawing that medicine it is very difficult in a senile population or older population to becoming a normal like an adult or a normal uh, bmd or normal bone density to become it is very difficult and for surgery basically surgery is done to manage the fracture pain not to treat the osteoporosis understanding my point so if fracture is there we can treat to reduce the pain but not to reverse the osteoporosis understanding so managing the osteoporosis as such it is a medical management not through surgery so next question is asefa which medical disease seriously cause osteoporosis medical disease as such not directly cause the osteoporosis is basically or you can say early menopause or in some cases like in which early hysterectomy and uh, complete hysterectomy with uh, ophorectomy is done in that case it can happen but directly medical disease causing osteoporosis it's not there unless and until some cancer is there it's called secondary osteoporosis like multiple myeloma is there or some other drug induced osteoporosis there then only it can cause osteoporosis otherwise the primary osteoporosis directly no medical disease can cause but that medical disease which causing osteoporosis is basically secondary osteoporosis because of some medical problem like i told earlier um, multiple myeloma is there or some other cancer is there it can lead to weakness of bone which is osteoporosis <laughs> now next question is lm amr how to expose sun on how to use sun on naked or or with cloth actually in today's world actually the exposure to sun is very good it is a natural method of uh, uh, developing or making uh, uh, vitamin d by our body but the thing is ki for that we have to expose most part of the body Uh, for at least 20 or 30 minutes in sun but it is becoming very difficult because most of the time we are wearing clothes and we don't have time also go out and uh, sit in sun just to take the vitamin d and other problem is in african i actually um, brown people uh, the um, 
because of melanin in the our skin it acts as a barrier for sun to transmit directly and our body to make the vitamin d3 that's why we are actually more uh, prone of uh, vitamin d deficiency but uh, like in uh, white people because of uh, their white skin they are less chances of vitamin d deficiency <laughs> Okay, so next question is: Is there any relationship between diabetes and osteoporosis? So directly, it is not uh, relation is not there, but definitely diabetes itself is a big disease, and uh, which can leads to multiple affect the multiple organs. So in that way, we can say. Uh, it can lead to uh, decrease physical activity. In that way, it can lead to osteoporosis. Otherwise, not not necessarily it is lead to uh, any link is there. So next is thank you, Dubasa. And the next question is when to screen osteoporosis in elderly male and elderly female? That is good question. Uh, so elderly female first I will tell because female has more are more prone for osteoporosis. Normally, till the patient, uh, till the uh, woman is menstruating, there is no, uh, normally, unless and until there is another underlying disease is there mm -hmm. or she is on steroid, there is no problem in, of uh, to screen the osteoporosis. So, once the menopause happens, so after that, with, after three to four years, every female has to get the Texas candle. That is the, uh, now that we have to follow this thing. This is a treatment guideline. Or if patient has a family history of uh, early osteoporosis or mm -hmm. early menopause is there, in that patient, uh, DEXA scan needs to be done. Screening of, for the osteoporosis needs to be done. In elderly male, like in India, Indian population, we normally... Don't do, get it done before 65 years of age. So, I think I will do, uh, answer your question. Now, next, thanks. It's interesting and nice. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamza. So, on behalf of uh, Blue Hills Ethiopia and all our participants, we thank you very much, Dr. Hamza, for taking the time to present on our session, on our seminar. Uh, and we hope to meet you with other topics in the future as well. We would also love to thank HPG Medical Assistance and uh, Dr. Hamza. Yes, sir. If you have anything that you would love to address at last, uh, let me give you that chance. Let me give you that stage one more time. No, no, just I am happy to be a part of this uh, presentation and to interact with the people from Zambia, Nairobi. Uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this uh, presentation and inshallah we will be doing some type of this type of educational presentation again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, doctor. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>